Where does that guy rank in relation to the players that have played the game throughout his history? Where does Antoine Dupont rank right now, today, in amongst the greats of our sport? And this is a question that, um, well, came up because I made a flippant comment when I was picking my team of the tournament. That video is in the feed uh, for the Six Nations just gone. And I said that calling Antoine Dupont world class doesn't do him justice. He needs a category all of his own. And it was in the um, England-France game at Twickenham. I was there at Twickenham. And in the video, again in the feed, I talked about how I felt like I was watching one of the greats to ever play rugby. Much like when I saw Lionel Messi play uh, for Barcelona against Manchester United in a in a um, Champions League semi-final. It felt that kind of magnitude. And that was the one benefit of England getting absolutely panned is I just got to sit and watch Antoine Dupont, not worrying about what the result was going to be. So I thought it'd be interesting to go through and have a look at who is the GOAT, who are the greatest, and where does Antoine du Dupont rank right now? Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I, I'd love your comments in this. I think this is going to be really interesting to read your comments and your thoughts on this. I don't think there'll be too many disagreements with uh, my choice at number one, though. The GOAT, Richie. I mean, come on. It had to be. It's got to be, doesn't it? Greatest player ever to play our sport? I reckon so. Actually, just worth saying, I have um, sort of drawn a line between... Because the, the game's changed so much. I, I'm focusing this purely on the, the modern and or professional era because that's when my knowledge of rugby is and also the game is just unrecognisable from the past to now. So it's really hard to judge between eras. So I'm sort of sticking it around the professional and modern era. So Richie McCaw, what is it, 148 caps for the All Blacks. He was the first All Black to go past 100. Three-time World Player of the Year, two-time World Cup winning captain, went to four World Cups, durable as anything. And I'll tell you what it was. I, I mean, he was part of an amazing rugby team. Probably the, the best team ever to play the game was that um, 11 to 15 New Zealand side. And he was a massive part of that. That team wouldn't have been as good as it was specifically because Richie McCaw was there. But it was, do you remember that period when you would watch New Zealand? And I can remember there was a game, at, I think it was La uh, Lansdowne Road at the time against Ireland. And Ireland at that point had never beaten New Zealand. And they were looking like they were going to do it. And I'm pretty sure there was a game at Murrayfield in the same autumn international tour as well. And just New Zealand just had this knack. Being behind, didn't matter by how many points. When he was on the field, you just knew they were going to win. And they inevitably did. So has to be the GOAT, no question. Uh, my number two is Jonah Lomu. Didn't win a World Cup, of course, but he changed the game. And he is to rugby, or he was to rugby, and still is to some degree in the minds of a lot of people who fell in love with the game because of Jonah Lomu. He is to rugby what Muhammad Ali uh, is to boxing, what um, what else can you say? What Tiger Woods is to golf, what Pele, Maradona, Lionel Messi is to football. That is Jonah Lomu. He transcended the sport. Was big, he's done more for rugby union than any player in the history of our sport. Uh, and an incredible athlete ahead of his time. Six foot five and however many, was it 19 stone and could shift. It was just a physical freak. And, um, well, still holds the record for the most tries at a Rugby World Cup. 15, tied with Brian Habana. Uh, although Jonah Lomby managed to get those 15 tries in just two tournaments. Had a, had a, he, he was the face of a, a rugby game and the best rugby game in the, that there's ever been and a cultural icon as well as a sporting and rugby icon. So yeah, I've I've gone for Joan Lomu at number two ahead of Dan Carter, the best 10 to play the game. Two-time World Cup winner with Richie McCaw, three-time World Player of the Year. The only person along with Richie McCaw to have achieved that and just peerless, highest point scorer in test rugby. Just an incredible rugby player, rugby brain, um, had it all, ha absolutely had it all. Yeah, Th there's no question. Dan Carter, number three. Uh, number four, Johnny Wilkinson, for me. Uh, again, a bit like Joan Lomu, and I, I don't know how much of this you you were aware of if you were outside of England or the UK, but certainly Johnny Wilkinson just had a, had an effect, not as big, but had a bit of an effect like Joan Lomu. He'd be kicking around with David Beckham in Adidas adverts and 
He did a massive amount for the game of rugby. And you don't just get to be regarded as a GOAT because you win World Cups. But special players do special things at special times. And that moment there was the culmination of a life's work for Johnny Wilkinson. Hours and hours of relentless work to make sure on his wrong foot he could knock over the winning points in a World Cup final. Special players do that. He's won everything you can possibly win in the game. Three consecutive Champions Cup, Heineken Cups with Toulon. And he managed to get 91 England caps when he basically... um, was injured for half of his career because he was such a brutal defender. And um, yeah, that two th- don't forget 2007 as well. He missed out on that first game when England got spanked by South Africa. He came back in and basically played the tournament on one leg and almost dragged an average England team to another World Cup in 2007. Amazing player. Martin Johnson, number five. Obviously a World Cup winning captain, two-time Lions captain. I think he was the first... Uh, no, I'll, I'll go back on that. I'll, I'll check my, my facts on that one. And the driving force behind a club team that dominated English and European rugby. He was a, a force of nature off the field as much as on it. And there's there's one story I love, which I think sums up why Martin Johnson is was so special as a rugby player. And it was in the World Cup quarter final in 2003. And England were losing to Wales and it wasn't going well. And the England team came into the dressing room at halftime. And Clive Woodward came in and was just about to speak to give his thoughts. And Martin Johnson stopped Clive Woodward, told him to leave, shut the door, and gave the players a dressing down. They went out and won the game. That is greatness right there. Martin Johnson is my number... What's that? Number five. Uh, Bod... Absolutely bod. 141 caps, the fourth highest of all time, I think. Uh, best, He's the best player the Six Nations has ever seen in terms of his performances. Antoine Dupont could well be someone that surpasses that. Uh, he is the... Is he top try scorer in the Six Nations? I think he is. Certainly in Irish rugby, he is. He could jackal better than most sevens, tackle better than most sixes, had a rugby brain of most nines or tens and finish better than most wingers. Incredible rugby player. Best Irish rugby player ever. And um, one of the best in the Northern Hemisphere. Best back in the North? No, obviously Johnny Wilkinson. Well, yeah. I mean, he's there on my list, so he's incredible. As is Alan Wynne-Jones. And just as I'm putting Alan Wynne-Jones up there, I'm wondering if I'm marking him down slightly because he is still playing. I I think maybe Alan Wynne-Jones goes above Martin Johnson. Yes, he hasn't won a World Cup. Maybe that'll change. <laughs> you never know. Stranger things have happened. But the guy is incredible. I-, I wonder if his test cap record will ever be beaten. He's on 158 caps for Wales now. 12 Lions caps makes it 170. Yeah, he's been on four British and Irish Lions tours. It- just unreal. 170 and counting. he would probably get to 180 by the end of the- his career. And that is just mind-blowing he made his debut in 2006 at grand slams what a man what a man uh, alan win jones is there next on the list brian habana equal as i mentioned with joan lomu earlier equals joan lomu with 15 tries in rugby world cups world cup winner european cup winner superstar and much like joan lomu and johnny wilkinson he became bigger than the game the face of the game uh, an icon beyond rugby that people looked to looked up to. Uh, and, well, in the case of Brian Habana, that meant he did daft things like chasing a cheetah. Uh, Sergio Parise is number nine on my list. Uh, if he was any other nationality, he could be further up. Because a, a man with this talent deserves to have World Cup accolades to his name, like the greats. I mean, Lawrence Delalio is one of the great number eights. He's a World Cup winner. Uh, Wayne Shelford, one of the great number eights. He's a World Cup winner. Zin Zambrook, he didn't win a World Cup, but one of the greats, number eights. Sergio Parise, best number eight ever in my book. And he single-handedly, through all those years when Italy had hardly anything, uh, they've got a decent team now, but when they had, they had, uh, they had nothing, he carried that team. And by sheer force of will and incredible talent, he managed to get some of those wins pretty much all on his own. 
and he went to five Rugby World Cups. This year is the first Rugby World Cup without Sergio Parise since 2000... Uh, no, since 1999. His first World Cup was 2003. Isn't that just mind-blowing? 142 caps. Uh, and one thing I love is he could have played for Argentina. He was born in Argentina. He went and played for the Italian under-20 side in the under-20 World Cup in Chile. So the Argentinian scouts were there and they said, hey, come and play for us. We've got a really good team. And his response to that was, to play for Italy was a dream. To play for my culture and my family. When you pull on a jersey, it isn't just a piece of clothing for the day, a convenience, loyalty, honour and trust. These are the things that mean a lot to me. I wish there was a little bit more of that in rugby union. Whilst I don't blame players for playing for other countries, if they get the chance, I'd probably do the same in their shoes. But I love Sergio Parise. That's number nine. So only one more on my number 10. And I am giving that number 10 spot to Antoine Dupont. That is how good I think he is. He's only 26. He's got 47 caps for France. He's won the World Player of the Year award once. Um, but already, I think he's that good that I have put him in my top 10. If France win the Rugby World Cup this year, I think Antoine Dupont goes straight in at... He goes straight in top five. I think he goes in... Maybe just below Johnny Wilkinson and just above Martin Johnson and Brian O'Driscoll. Maybe. Yeah, I think he goes... If France win the World Cup, I think he goes top five. This guy's a freak. He's an absolute freak. He does things that no other player on earth can do. He sees things that no other rugby player can see. And kicking off his wrong foot a 50-22, making a burst around the base with electric pace that no one can stop, holding up a, an opposing winger over the try line when you can't fathom the physics of how he managed to stop him. Pound for mat pound, he might be one of the strongest. He's one of the quickest. He's what he's got the best rugby brain on the planet that we are watching right now. I'd honestly believe we are watching the best rugby player that has ever played the game in the modern and professional era. Just to caveat that again, this is the best. I think we, we are currently watching the best rugby player we have ever seen. And I think in another five years time, we will be talking about Antoine Dupont as, oh, is he, is he number two ahead of Jonah Lomu or is he number one ahead of Richie McCaw? Uh, I think he's that good. And there is always a danger of exaggerating the talent of people when they're young, but he's 26 now and he, he's delivering year on year on year. The only, I will just say one thing, the only concern I have, slight question mark, is the fact that he plays so much club rugby for, for Toulouse. The top 14 is such a brutal competition that I wonder if that will have a toll on his career as the years go on. Maybe he won't be able to play like Richie McCaw did and, um, well, Alan Wynne-Jones has managed to be a war horse again by being used sparingly at times by his club side. Brian O'Driscoll being used sparingly by Leinster at times in the way that Johnny Sexton is now. That's the only question mark I've got in my mind. Is he going to burn too bright but not for as long because... He plays so much. He plays all. He's that good that when he's available, he gets picked for his club. He gets picked for his country. France, look after this guy because um, I think he could well be the goat. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, I will see you on the next video. Leave your comments and hit subscribe. Nice one.